All right. Well, it is seven o'clock. And as you know, we like to start on time. So I'd like to welcome you to tonight's program. Uh, my name is Matt Bender. I am your adult program coordinator here at the Schaumburg Township District Library. Tonight, we're welcoming photographer Dirk Fletcher. Uh, Dirk is going to talk about one of his many projects that he is he is uh, somewhat completed, but still in the middle of, but also can talk about, uh, about Lustron Homes uh, across the Midwest and other parts of the country. Before we get started, um, I just wanted to remind you once again that closed captioning is always available. Um, click on the closed captioning button in your Zoom tools. Uh, you can turn it on or turn it off, depending on your preference. Uh, also, I just want to remind you about next Tuesday's program, uh, Life Cycle of Clothing in the 19th Century. It's going to be a fascinating program from um, Illinois State Museum curator, Erica Holst. Um, she is going to talk about how families, especially those in the 19th century, used and reused dresses and clothes and cloth and materials to keep up with current fashions. Um, so it, it'll be very, very interesting, uh, especially if you are a fan. It is a Zoom uh, virtual program. So seven o'clock, if you would like to sign up, schomburglibrary.org. Okay, uh, that's enough from me. Let's talk a little bit about our guest tonight. Um, Dirk Fletcher has a Bachelor's of Arts from Brooks Institute of Photography in Santa Barbara. He also has a Master's of Fine Arts in Independent Filmmaking and Digital Imaging from Governor State University in Illinois. Uh, currently, he is a professional marketing representative for Canon USA. Yes, Canon, the photography company. Um, before this, he was department chairman of photography at Harrington College of Design. Um, and before that, he was the staff photographer for the Museum of Science and Industry. Um, he is the author of a book. Uh, he has been the, for the board president of the Filter Photo Festival uh, and also has many other projects besides this one about the less drawn homes. Um, one of which we were talking about uh, what is the Holga Stratosphere. Uh, those photos on Dirk's website, dirkflexure.com are awesome. And the video is also awesome. So enough for me. Let's hand it over to Dirk. Dirk, welcome. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, as as Matt said, I'm um, I don't know if I'm a geek or a nerd. I know it it varies. There's some real specific criteria, but I'm fortunate enough that I've been working in photography basically my entire life. My dad is a retired photographer, and my earliest memories with him was sitting in the dark room um, next to him as he was uh, you know developing um, making prints. So my brother is a steady cam operator in Hollywood. My mom, um, she she. She went a different way. She was a pastry chef. She is a pastry chef in St. Louis still. Um, but I'm fortunate that I've been able to work in and around photography my whole life. And I was talking to, to Matt a little bit before how kind of how some projects kind of come up and present themselves where they, they you know, I didn't set out to really try. I didn't set out and go, hey, these, these, whole, they're these, uh, these lustrum houses are really cool. I should go do a project on them. It kind of, um, it kind of came out of, kind of came up really organically. So let me, um, I'm going to switch over and we'll go into the presentation and I'll kind of share how this came about and, um, and, and where, you know, where the, uh, where it's going and where the, uh, where I'm hoping it, it goes. I'm going to see if I can get it into um, the presenter mode. Excellent. All right, you guys have the first screen up? Porcelain Utopia? Yes, Dirk. Right, uh, currently, go. you've got your view of the slideshow present. Oh. So I would switch those. Hang on. Are you still seeing me? Uh, I what I see is the uh, presenter side of uh, PowerPoint, not the, oh. not just like the viewer side of it. All right, so let me we're gonna we'll jump out of this then. 
We'll do a new share. And boom, how's that? Good. Right now I don't I I don't see your PowerPoint. Get out. There we go. Yep, looks great. Cool. All right. So what is a loss job? Um, and this, it's kind of came out, um, not only did it come out for me as a, as a weird kind of a different project, it's, it didn't start out as a, a goal of this gentleman, um, Carl Strandlin, who set out, who was kind of the forefather of Lustron Homes. Um, he had a company um, built here in Chicago called Chicago Vit that was making porcelain enameled tiles that were then being used for um, gas stations and um, they, the book and all the history says hamburger stands. They don't really ever say white castles, but they were white castles. So he was making, um, basically there were stainless steel stamped panels that were then um, dipped and cooked in ovens to make these kind of impervious um, structures that were, were intended to be, to go up very easily um, without really needing a lot of uh, heavy tradesmen use or, or tradesmen, um, you know, to build it, which is part of the problem with he, he got in trouble down the road, we'll tell you about. But he, he was trying to get the this company off the ground, basically making hamburger stands and gas stations. And it was during the war. So he had to, so there was, they started, um, uh, there was a shortage on steel in order for any company to get steel you had to get clearance from the government to um to be able to to, to have steel um for your company so he he pivoted and he said you know well i'm already making you know, a thousand square foot house or a thousand square foot structure i can kind of retool a little bit and make that same structure build it a little bit differently but make a house out of the same material and that's kind of where the lustron um where it came from this is the very first lustron that he built this is was the demo house that was actually placed in the um uh, hinsdale um nursery so this one was up until the early 2000s when it was finally knocked down so he he had to go to the government and, and kind of petition to get steel released. And there was a huge process. This was 46 that he went and he was able to get steel released and, and finance to build this um, or to start the company. And um, so he built the starter home. This is also an ad based on the Hinsdale on the very first one he built that was in Hinsdale, but he was able to get struck uh, funding to buy a Curtis Wright um, airplane plant in Ohio. And ironically, this building is still there. It's the home now. If you're in um, what's behind the what's behind the building is now the uh, airport in Columbus, Ohio. So this is the DSW warehouse that is on the south east side of the airport. So if you go by there, and I have photographed the DSW warehouse, the front building looks the same. The building behind does look a little bit different, but it, it's pretty much the same uh, building. So something pretty cool, um, just being a, a photo um, nerd or geek, um, Arnold Newman, a very, very famous photographer, portrait photographer, very much known for um, his, his uh, the way he would compose images. He had a couple of very famous pictures, but I was happy to see when I was going through the, the history book that he made this photograph. And so this is, um, there's about 3,300 parts needed to build a Lustron house. So the panels, the metal um, that made up the outside walls and the inside walls are also metal. There's a tile roof, a porcelain um, tile roof that makes up the, uh, the roof. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, but this is all, um, and believe it or not, all of this, these materials were able to get onto one truck. They had specially, uh, specially designed trucks that would show up at the, the site and you had to pour the foundation for the home. And then you had um, 
it, it varied. The goal was to be able to build the house inside of three weeks. And that was what was published. And that was when they went to the government, when they gave them their numbers on how they could address the housing shortage. The, he came in with really grand numbers of both how many houses he can produce and how long it would take the house to, to get built. So they would show up on the property, they would leave the trailer there, and what was on the outside of the trailer was what they needed first. So those were the outside walls, they would uh, they would build the, the structures for those and they would just start um, you know, building. And then by the very inside of the trailer was all the furnishings for you know, the, 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 the faucets and the sinks and stuff like that, that you needed kind of towards the end after the outside structure was built. One thing that's really cool too, um, so I mentioned the tiles are also the, the roof tiles. About half of them, I've got a tab coming up where I talk about um, kind of kind of hidden lustrons, homes that have, that are lustron homes, but they've changed it or they've, they've either been sited or the, they've had a new roof put on. And ironically, as long as nothing ever got cracked, the, uh, the, the original roofs stay intact. So the, the roof, you know, it's a porcelain enamel, just like what, you know, the uh, coffee pots and, and pots and pans. And once, it, if a tree limb hit it, or there was any really bad hail or anything that would hit the roof panel and crack it, then eventually the roof would, would rust and they would have to replace it. I'd say about a quarter of the homes, and I photographed so to date about 400 of these homes, and about 25% of them have... Um, have had new roofs put on, which is kind of funny because it's that's the, the easiest tell, even if the house has siding, if it has the original roofing in place of what a lustron is. So this is um, Carl Stramlin in front of that, uh, in front of one of the first homes that he built. I'm not sure this is the Hinsdale house. I think this was one that they built in a parking lot um, by the, the manufacturing facility. So let's fast forward to 2018. My, um, my brother came to visit me and he's an avid, um, a podcast listener. And he said, Hey, I heard this podcast and they were talking about Lustron homes. And they mentioned that Illinois has a bunch, Lombard has the most, but Brookfield has the highest, the second highest um, concentration of Lustron homes. So we drove around. And I said, Oh yeah. And my wife and I rented a, uh, an apartment in Brookfield for a couple of years before we bought our home in Brookfield. And down the street was a yellow Lustron. And um, two of my wife's uncles are uh, contractors. And whenever we had family over, they would always comment. They would say, hey, there's one of those lustrons down the street. So at the time, this was in, when we first moved here was 95. So we were there in 96, probably through 2000. So this I, wasn't a project yet. It was still kind of, you know, just, just, hey, there's that funny looking refrigerator house. But then my brother came up and um, I started just looking at, you know, looking at the homes. We drove around. I thought, you know what, I, I'm going to go ahead and start kind of photographing the ones in Brookfield. Um, this is one of my favorite, unfortunately, this was one of my favorite homes because it kind of looked like the All-American home, but they have since covered the whole house is in, um, you can't tell it's a luster on it anymore. It's had a new roof put on and they put vinyl siding on it. So I'm going to actually go re-photograph it so I can show both of them. Um, this is another one also in Brookfield where they put siding on the house, but it still has the original roof intact. Um, and this is the full uh, complete luster on. The window covers are not original. They were added, but there were some um, original lustron. That's how the the original casings look like. So those are the original windows, um, but then this one, um, ironically, still has the roof intact, but they've stuccoed over the uh, the panels. There's the Brookfield water tower hiding in the background. Uh, this is uh, one of the last ones in the in the Brookfield group that I photographed. I actually recently re-photographed this one in the next one because the the houses um, changed proper changed uh, ownership and they they cleared away all of the um, all of the bushes and shrubs. Both these two are like they look completely different because you can see the whole house all the way down to the structure. So I have re-photographed them. I need to add them to the the database. Uh, this one just recently sold. I want to say in the past couple months. This is. Uh, and this one too, if you notice most of them, um, can't see here, most of them have, like this one has it, a, a cutout where there was kind of a, a stoop, a little patio out front. Um, this one, a lot of them are covered in. So this one's been covered in. There are some homes toward the end of the run. So they made them in 90, in, uh, in 47 through 50. Towards the end, he tried making a house that was a little more affordable. And it was a little smaller footprint and it didn't have that 
um, that little cutout, like this one's covered over on the left side, but I'll show you some of those um, when we come to them. So at this point, um, I'm still just kind of curious. I hadn't really, it's not really a project yet, but this is up north. Um, this is in, in Lincolnshire, half day in Stone Court. So this, um, I'm sorry, Stone Gate Circle. So this was a, a circular court that had, I want to say the original had 12 or 13 Lustron homes in it. So there are, uh, I think three of them have been knocked down. One's a double lot and then there are two modern houses put on there. But this one again has that front area that's been built up. So they they didn't want the outdoor, the, that kind of stoop area and they kind of filled it in, but they left the original um, the original roofing and the original panels. And, but this one does have all new windows in it. The windows, the, the case windows are really, um, they're, they're not great windows. I think if you were in an area where it wasn't cold in the winter, it wouldn't be a huge issue, but it's uh, a lot of them anywhere where they get really bad winters, they, uh, you'll see the, the windows have been replaced because they were just like sieves letting, uh, letting light in. So this is the first one of the group um, that I'll show you guys that has a Lustron garage. So there are two different um, formats or two different kinds of garage you can get. This is a, obviously a one car garage and there were two car garages. And then there's um, some homes that instead of having, you can see the little, uh, just the open um, kind of a rain trellis in between the house and the garage, there's a, a covered uh, breezeway kit that was also available for the Lustron homes. And I'll show you what those that breezeway kit looks like on a couple of them uh, when we get to them. So this is still in that Stonegate circle, a non-Lustron garage. And again, almost all of them in that circle have had, I'm not sure, I think the, the white one at the end, um, not this one, the one across the street has the open um, porch area, but a lot of them in that area have, uh, have had the porches filled in. So it's still not really a project yet. So I'm originally from St. Louis, so I go down to visit my parents a lot. So I did read um, in the history, I hadn't, I hadn't bought the book yet. I was still looking at the book on Google, um, Google Books, which is kind of funny because you don't get every page when you're using Google Books. So I not, you know, I wasn't able to get all the info. I was only able to get, I think it's the right-hand page you get. Um, but there's, I, I, I think there's 10 of these um, homes all built in one stretch on Lipsinger Road in Brentwood, which is a near West suburb of St. Louis. So this is um, that same uh, house kind of looking down and it's kind of cool because you can see a bunch of different, you know, siding, roofing changes. Um, this is at the bottom of the street looking back up um, where that, that yellow one was on the, at the other end of the street. This one I particularly like with the, the vintage car in the back, um, the detached garage. This one did have an addition on the back, a non-lustron addition in the one car garage, but I love seeing that, that 60s style. Um, I think it was an Impala sitting in the garage, which is kind of cool. Super clean, always looking for lines and shapes to, to compose with. This one is not actually on Litzinger. It's actually right around the corner. So as you pull up, there's the all of them in a row that kind of go up the hill. And then if you were to take a left, there's this one right on the end of the corner, which brings up a really interesting point that I started. So I've got everything right now in, a, um, in an Airtable database. And as I started the project, I started, I just put in, you know, I started out just here's the house. I have a, a little GPS uh, module that I put on the camera when I'm shooting that actually trans that, that puts up uh, that embeds the GPS data. And um, I started noticing a bunch of kind of anomalies or, or things about where the lustrons were, how they were built, where they were built. Um, a lot of them would have a large uh, mature tree in the front yard. So I started thinking like, I wonder if like, the last thing they did was plant a tree in the front yard. Um, a lot of them were on corners and that's where I was going with this one um, on the corner and then the yellow one on the corner. But even in neighborhoods where there wasn't an entire street full of lustrons, there seemed, there's a, a much higher, and I haven't gone back to really look at the data to see how many of the 400 I photographed are on corners, but I am recording that data. So at this point, um, I really, I, and the position I have with Canon, so I travel, um, I fly around. I'm, I'm unfortunately in Vegas now. I was hoping to be there in person, but I'm in Vegas. We're setting up for the NAB show, the National Association of Broadcasters. But I also, um, a bigger portion is working with, with local clients. So I do technical support for professional users, um, 
that are like agencies, newspapers, anyone that has a lot of our cameras, I'm there, I'm, I'm available for technical help and uh, to help them with gear and equipment and that sort of thing. So the area I cover is Wisconsin, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, um, down to Kentucky. And when you really start looking at, there's a couple resources, there's one called Lustron Locator. And it's, um, there's a book that Tom Fetters wrote that is kind of the, the Bible. That's the most accurate book um, with the most amount of data. And there's an appendix in the back that has all the locations of the homes. And someone took that data and they built it into a Google map, which is kind of cool because they've got recorded in there if what is um, homes that have been knocked down, current homes, you can click on it, get a picture of it, you can get the address, and then you can also tab out and look at um, Google Maps, the current Google Maps for that home. So a lot of times I'll pull up on a house and there's nothing there. There's either an empty lot or a modern kind of a, uh, like a McMansion or, or just a much bigger um, house with not, not as much, you know, class or as much cool, um, um, as the as the Lustron home. So I, I said, you know what, this is of the homes of the areas that I'm in, um, I, I traveled to, to the areas with the most highest amounts of concentrations. So I said, you know what, this is going to be a really cool project. So I'm already, I think I'm in my fifth year of doing it. I initially set out to do 20%. Um, and now I've, I've, I'm past 25% of the existing homes and as homes continue to to get knocked down i guess that percentage is going to go up but i'm still i'll probably keep shooting i'm not going as crazy for numbers of homes now i'm trying to get really unique ones and ones that have been changed or altered or ones that aren't so a lot of them um if they're they have the original windows in them if they have um, i think you have to have i think they let you change the heating system um, to a more modern heating system, but there's a number of them that are uh, have been declared uh, national historic monuments. Um, so those are the ones that I'm still going after. This is one of my favorites. This was down in Louisville, Kentucky. I was down for the uh, uh, Kentucky Derby and I shot a couple on the way home. This is in Ohio. A lot of the homes have, um, this particular one was having some plumbing work done on it. They were trenching out the inside of the house and laying all new plumbing down. And the, the, the homeowner was there and they said that it's really common among homes. This is something that um, that really started getting my attention as well. So I started realizing that more so than these being a you know 1,100 square foot house that two bedroom home, and there are some three bedrooms. I'll show you those that I have. But that the home you would have to think that when the home was built, it would be built in a environment where there's you know other kind of starter homes, two bedroom, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 square foot homes. And, you know, in the 50s, you look at where they are now. So this was down in Atlanta and there were this, this neighborhood was absolutely exquisite. It was a gorgeous neighborhood. The home was quite small um, compared to the, the neighbor homes in the neighborhood. So you can tell that whatever other homes were there had been knocked down. This one, I, if I'm not mistaken, is a, a an Airbnb, you can rent this one, but it's in a very upscale neighborhood. And across town, there was this one that is in a, a very, um, a troubled neighborhood. It, it, you know, it's no secret that looking at the house and the other homes in the area, it was a, a you know, neighborhood that was not doing as well as the other one. And I've started really thinking about how the homes can can almost be an indicator for the success or failure of urban planning. That the, you know, if, if all the homes were built in similar, in areas with similar homes, looking at the homes around them now is, is can kind of be an indicator or barometer of, of how that area has, has either progressed or not progressed. Um, this one, uh, these, uh, this one, so the, this one, and uh, the next three, I think, are down in, they're about 90 miles south of Atlanta. And this one has really took, kind of got my attention because I'd never seen a house. I grew up in St. Louis. Um, I'd never seen a house that basically had, it was kind of, it's not really dirt, but almost like a, a hard sand for the yard. I saw the pictures of it on, um, on Google Maps and I had no idea what to expect, but it was just, it, it really kind of, uh, um, kind of, Kind of made me think a little bit and and realize how uh you know how different people live and how this is kind of a it's more than a uh a look at 
um, you know, some kind of unique and interesting looking houses, but it is kind of a, a, a could be a take on, on the communities in which the houses were located and what they've done. This is also, these are all in a, a Albany, Georgia. So these are so close together. When you look at the, um, the, the, uh, the Lustron locator map, the Google map, um, it doesn't, until you really zoom in, you can't tell that there's a bunch of these houses. They're so close together. It looks like one dot on the map. Uh, this is back, this is in downstate Illinois. This one was um, again on a corner. Um, a lot of them, like I said, a lot of them are on a corner. This one was empty. Um, it was for sale. It's a beautiful lot though. It's in Ohio. So also in Ohio. Again, kind of uh, uh, surrounded by modern houses. They had also capped off that front entryway. I really like this one for some reason. I have no idea why. It's just kind of a, a unique um, looking one. The time of day was kind of that magic hour. The sun had just gone down. So everything lighting, it was just the big soft, um, the clouds overhead. This is in Cleveland. You know, the other thing that I started recording, um, as you look at a lot of these have direct TV antennas out front, you got to think that now, I mean, everyone gets their TV from cable and, um, you know, internet and stuff. I mean, we did cut the cable. Um, I personally did about a couple of years ago and I put an HD antenna in my attic because we face, you can almost see Sears Tower um, from there. But a lot of the homes and a tab that I put in the database that I'm recording is if they have either a ham radio antenna or a, uh, the old school, the TV antennas that you used to see on top of houses. Um, a lot of them still have those up. This was in, uh, this was just down in Indiana. This is a cool set of pictures. The next, um, the other thing that, that really is that, that started happening is a lot of times we'll go up to like a TV station and I'll go with the salesperson to, uh, if they were, um, you know, having questions, they were looking to buy something or just they wanted to visit, I would go with them to make, you know, just to be a, a techie nerd for them. So, and we're going to be there for two or three hours and that's it. But you end up, I left St. Louis, or I left Chicago at, you know, four in the morning so I can get up in Minneapolis and be shooting these houses right at sunrise. So this is, I really like this one because the, the sun is still low enough that it's not even on the, uh, on the, on the grass yet. But in, um, um, this is also in uh, in St. Paul, but there's, in addition to these, a couple of that are kind of outliers, there's a group of homes that, oh, I gotta tell you about this one too. There's a group of homes on, um, I'm drawing a blank on the street, but there's another street of like nine, eight or nine houses that I went to photograph that you'll see some pictures of. So my wife is convinced that um, I'm gonna eventually um, go the way of like bone collector or something. So I rarely go into houses with people, um, and also I don't, and this is kind of a weird thing that I had to think about how I was going to approach this in the very beginning, but I don't knock on the door first. Um, what I'm doing is completely legal. I'm not standing on their lawn. I'm, uh, but I know it's creepy. Um, we recently, um, actually not even a month ago, two people pulled up in front of our house and were taking pictures. So I kind of opened the door and I'm like, hi. And they were like, hi, my, my grandfather built this. And it turns out they were the granddaughters of the no, they were the great granddaughters of the, the guy who initially built the house. And we were the first family to buy the house outside of their family. So three different generations lived in the home we live in, all in the same family. We were the first ones to, to, to live in it. So we did invite them in and, and show them around and stuff. But, you know, it, but it is creepy when you're sitting at home and you see someone taking your picture. Um, there was one time I was going to, to talk to somebody and I had a a suit and a tie or a tie and a blazer on. And I stopped and photographed a home and I was thinking, God, if by any chance those people were late on their mortgage, they're going to panic and, um, and think that, uh, you know, that there's, that, that something's going to happen, that they're getting repoed. So um, I generally don't go into homes. If I, I always had the Tom Fetters book with me. And uh, once I tell people what I'm doing, um, they're, they're totally into it. Um, no one has, has chucked me out or, or, you know, has asked me not to photograph their house, especially when they learn uh, what I'm doing. It's kind of funny. These are the ones on, uh, on um, the name, the street starts with a P I'll think of it, but the ones that, that are all in a row in, uh, in Minneapolis. But it's kind of a, uh, you know, a, a, you know, it's turning into as much as it's a study on architecture and, and homes is almost a study on, on sociology as well. 
I really like this one, a little bit longer lens, just looking into the lustrons all in a row. They all have such a unique look to them. This was kind of cool. This was um, also in Louisville, Kentucky. This guy was super into old cars. So this is an Audi 200 that was a wagon, an Avant. There were only like three or 300 of these brought into the country. It was a five speed. It was kind of a little rough. He also had one of the old um, Mercedes, like probably 25 years ago, had a car with a wing on it. It was a little 190 series with a Cosworth engine. He had that. So where I'm photographing the house this way to my left was that Mercedes. And it was just, it was really rough, but he was super into it. And he was redoing the interior of his house. And he gave me one of the tiles as well. Um, but I did walk around the yard with him and stuff. You also end up, that was another thing that I, I didn't mention. When I really decided that this is going to be a, an ongoing project, a lot of the way, because I'm traveling for work, I don't have the option to photograph homes at the right time of day. You know, if you were an architectural photographer being paid to go shoot a, a you know, a house for a magazine for Dwell or something, the photography in Dwell is absolutely stunning. Um, where Architectural Digest is a very, um, very traditionally photographed uh, magazine dwell is just it's it's very current it it breaks some of the traditional architectural rules but the houses look just gorgeous but in either condition in either um, application you know this is just before dawn in the rain it's not the ideal time to go photograph a house but I had to make the decision that because I'm you know I don't always have the option to be where to, to photograph the house at the right time I need to make the best image of the house when I'm there um, and that's what I've done. Sometimes, uh, you know, overcast days turn into better days, especially on a house that, that reflects a little bit, um, that is not a, uh, doesn't have a, a matte surface to it, something that's a little bit reflective. This was a really cool house on a corner. Um, I really like that they were, it was on a pretty steep hill. I've got another picture looking down, but I love that there were steps on the sidewalk that going both directions on this one. This was in, um, this is not far. I want to say this was in, oh gosh, not Woodstock, Illinois, Livingston, Illinois. I can't remember. So this is the two star, this is the two car uh, Lustron garage. That is not the Lustron breezeway kit though. Um, the, the orientation of the breezeway kit, I've got some pictures of it is different for when it's when it's a, uh, when it's set up. I haven't seen anywhere it's a, a detached garage that's been, in this configuration where it's kind of out back with the, uh, with the Lustron um, uh, breezeway kit. Also not a Lustron breezeway kit. This was really cool too. I started a tab right around this time. These are up in Wisconsin. This one and the next couple of houses are in Wisconsin. The red car in the background is a, was the first generation Honda I think, I don't know if it was a hybrid or a full electric car. It was the Insight. Um, it's quite old, but I started a, another, an additional tab um, that I'm, I couldn't decide which of these two I like. I think I like the, the kind of creepy tree in the front yard. It kind of goes with everything, but this is kind of cool too. But I started a tab. Um, I started recording number of houses with a American flag hanging on it and with a red car in the driveway. Cause I noticed there were a lot of cars for, for you know, no reason why they would, Lustron owners like red cars, but there, there seemed to be a high preponderance of those. Um, this is the um, one of two houses that I've photographed on a tripod. Everything else is handheld. Um, that is a uh, non-Lustron garage in the back. It was made to look like that. This was kind of cool. This was in, um, this is just about 90 miles south of Chicago. There is a, um, and when I photographed it, um, it was, it was creepy. I went inside and it was definitely creepy, but I was going back through this area and I remembered I parked in the parking lot of a vape shop across the street. And this was kind of back in the woods a little bit. And I, I got out, I looked at the, uh, the GPS data, plugged it in, found the vape shop, called the guy and said, Hey, I got a really weird question for you. My name's Dirk Fletcher. I'm a photographer. I came through a couple of years ago and there was that metal house right across the street from you. And I'm coming back through again, and I wanted to see if it was still there. I was going to come by, and he goes, no, they knocked it down about six or eight months ago. Um, this is the only picture that I've gone and, and kind of editorialized and played with the color and stuff and made it look even creepier. Um, but I was going to go back through and, and, and go see if it was still there and, and what, you know, additional two years uh, did, but they uh, 
probably knocked it over. A couple in a row. This one's also in, um, this was in a suburb of uh, Indianapolis. Uh, single car garage, obviously. Also in Indy. The only one in the entire collection with a person in it. Uh, this was a two car detached garage. The front of the garage, um, you can tell is the, the doors and stuff had been replaced. But there's the back with the, uh, the Lustron tiles. The house was abandoned, so I did walk around on the property. I start, you start really noticing, I mentioned this early on, that how a lot of the homes, you know, you can tell by the, uh, the roof tiles if it's a Lustron or not. This is also in Indianapolis. Um, so there's the home. The next one, oh, no, I didn't have two of them. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of fun when you can start noticing them before you even see the entire house. This one also had a red car in the driveway on the wider shot. So this is a really cool house. So there's, in a couple more slides will be a reverse of this. So there's actually two Lustrons. This is down in um, New Orleans. So the house behind the pink one is part of the Lustron, uh, the, the blue Lustron on the corner. So the blue Lustron had been turned into the entire house was, what was the entire Lustron was turned into a living room and a two story house was basically built next to it that had a modern kitchen and, and you know, bedrooms and that sort of thing. And I've got a shot from the street coming the other way that I'll show you. This is in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Also in Michigan, I cannot remember what city though. There are two green lustrons. This is a repaint. This is not one of the green tiled lustrons. This one, uh, the tiles had been painted. Red car and American flag. Not on a corner. This one was on a corner. On a corner. This one was a, uh, a National Historic Monument. This is in, um, oh, what is the name of it? It's in Michigan. I think Paw Paw, Michigan, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it's a, uh, a uh, on the historic registry. There's a, uh, that one. I also, the other tab, I think, I don't know if I said that uses, I've got a, uh, um, a tab that the house was photographed in the rain. This one was, and it also has a, the big antenna hooked up to it. This is in New Jersey. There were um, two in New Jersey and two in New York that uh, our headquarters for Canon is in there, is in uh, Melville. So I got there again, left it, you know, way before the crack of dawn to get there. And uh, and I, I got to go photograph these. Um, this is the, um, so this is the the Lustron uh, Breezeway kit. So it's all glass. There's a, a, you know, like a storm door on it and then storm doors or storm windows. It, it goes through a, uh, a an outside door on the house. So there's no, you know, it's a, it's kind of like a three season room that goes into either a one car or two car garage. This was also on, I can't remember if this was new. No, this was New Jersey because the other two were New York. So I started a tab, um, this one's, and I don't know if there is truly, if what I'm going to say is uh, uh, is actually the case, it's a great way to think that it possibly um, is. So this one I photographed and the, the gentleman came out and saw me and he goes, hey, what are you doing? And I told him what I was doing. He goes, you got to, don't, don't go. Are you in a hurry? You got to talk to my daughter. She'll be home in a second. And it turns out that so in the back of the book that um, that Fetters wrote, there he's got a list of all the homes that are sold, their address, and what model house it was and what color it was. And this is a house that is not in that record. And I asked, um, so there's a couple different, um, there's the Lustron Historical Society, kind of the ad hoc Lustron Historical Society is in, um, is in, in Ohio and I'm trying to draw, um, Jack McLaughlin is the one who runs it. And I asked him, I said, you know, I photographed this house and it's not on the registry of anything that Lustron has sold. And their thought was, it, they were in the pictures of after Lustron went bankrupt, there were pictures of the auction selling them off. And there's a half dozen trucks loaded with homes on them that were sold during the auction. And their thought was 
that this house was sold after Lustron went out of business. Um, Jack McLaughlin was like, yeah, I don't know. I doubt that's the case. It's probably just sloppy bookkeeping. Tom Fetters, who was kind of the, the Lustron um, guru um, in, um, in Lombard, he, he gave it a little more credibility than, uh, than Jack McLaughlin did. He said, you know, that's a, that's a possibility that there's, um, you know, it's definitely a, uh, uh, something that, that could have happened because there were, I mean, you can see him in the photographs. There were six houses that were, they were on trucks loaded, ready to go. There is a hotel or a motel down in Ohio somewhere that's, it's like a strip motel, you know, a drive-by where all the rooms are in a row. You park out front, this made out of Lustron panels. Uh, these two are both in Lombard. I forgot where this one is, but I love the color of it. Everything just worked together. Ham radio antenna and a corner. And you can barely see there is a red car there. So it's the trifecta. This is another sad one. Um, this is in Dayton, Ohio. Um, all the homes that that I photographed, all the Lustrons in Dayton were very depressed, um, in depressed communities. I really like the second shot though. Um, the first one, I, I, I almost feel like it's a little bit too much um, kind of showing the, the, the despair of the house on the right. I like this one though, because it, it gives an idea of the age of the neighborhood. Um, I like the brick, the, uh, the cobblestone streets. They were still very much intact in the, about an eight block area where this one was found. This is a cool one. So this is, um, so in the beginning, I told you about Carl Strandlin. He actually, um, I think in the, if you look over, I don't know if you can see my mouse, in between the truck, there's a white house kind of across the street. That was his, where he lived, but this was his personal lustron. So he built the house. Um, this had the same setup as the ones that were, there were 60 of them sold to Quantico, Virginia, that were used on a, on a, uh, uh, on a, um, uh, naval base. I think two of them are all that's left. They're used as uh, equipment sheds now. But I went to visit, um, I was in Ohio and I drove by and I just thought, God, if this isn't telling of the uh, the entire three-year run of Lustrons trying to be, you know, the last one standing. Um, and I haven't been back. There's, if you turn around, there's a, or to my right is like an Oaks Loud Lounge, Oaks Lodge. And then behind me is a golf course. So I'm hoping that this wasn't uh, wasn't fate, it's fate wasn't a wrecking ball, but we'll see. Two car detached garage, but that very well could have had the, uh, that's in the same proximity that would have a, uh, the, um, the breezeway kit. This one was funny. The guy across the street was walking his dog and I pull over and I'm in a rental car and I'm like, he pulls up or he walks up. He goes, they're finally going to knock this piece of shit down. And I was like, I don't know. And apparently the woman who lived there um, had gone into, um, into care and the house had just, you know, someone comes and mows the lawn, but it just been sitting on this block and not really lived in or taken care of. And uh, he, he, he couldn't wait to see it go. This was a cool one on a corner non non breezeway or non lustron breezeway non garage two of them share driveway a metal house and a metal metal uh, airstream was pretty neat this one was really interesting i pulled up and uh, like i said earlier i always check the home in um in Google Maps to see what it looks like, to see even if it's still there. And this one was very, you know, the paint was all fading and falling off and, and looked very um, kind of in despair. And you, if the house has been photographed several times in Google Maps, you can, there's a slider on it where you can go back and see the earlier photographs. And the last one, it'll tell you where, it was a couple of years old, but I pulled up on this one, which was on a corner, um, but beautiful, it was beautifully refurbed. Um, it was definitely without a doubt painted, but it was a really nice job. It's kind of a pleasant surprise. Kind of cool to see a Benz in the back of this one. Sometimes you start looking for, you, you photograph them so much, you're like, got to look for some other shapes and designs to incorporate in. So it's kind of, this one was on an alley. There was some commercial buildings behind me. This one was interesting. I think I've got a shot of the back of it coming up. Yeah. So you can see the, the back corner 
um, was all opened up. And I don't know if they were looking to see the state of the house. It did look like it had new windows in it. Um, but if they were looking to see if, you know, normally if it's a wooden house, there would be a, a you know, you'd be checking for termite damage, but it's all metal. Even the, the beams, everything was all metal. So, uh, but the, the pieces had definitely been removed. This is also an earlier home. Um, you'll notice the, the windows on the side of the house. It has two windows um, and then two windows. The later ones went to one larger window, but the earlier ones had the four windows, the, the four smaller windows, two in each room. Oh, this is a funny tab. I started another tab. It, my car was visible in the shot. And that's my car over by the speed limit sign. A lot of them are in college towns as well. And you think that uh, it kind of makes sense that it's a, you know, a smallish affordable house that would kind of find itself in a college town. Kind of camouflaged. Also in a college town. Also on a corner. With my car in the shot. <laughs> Racking up points on this one. This was the only other shot that I've used a tripod on. This was in Danville, Illinois. Coming back to see my parents one time. The reflection on the bottom of the house and the light on the grass was literally a passing car. This was about a 25 second exposure. This guy was funny. He was, he's a renter, but he came out and he goes, you're not going to cite me, are you? And I'm like, no, not at all. But they were, uh, they were doing some work on the garage behind it. This was used in a, um, this is downstate Illinois. This is used the rectory for the church it was next to. I think I am going to start separating out um, homes that are no longer used as a, a single, you know, as a single family home. Because there's, there's one that's a, a hair cutter. A couple of them are offices for apartment buildings. That's a Lester on Breezeway. They were actually roofing, they were actively roofing on the back of this house. This was in Cleveland. Does have a, uh, a ham radio antenna, if you noticed on that one. Um, so this is kind of cool. It's a metal, they replaced the metal roof with the metal roof. So the um, it is a replacement roof. And there are a couple that I've noticed that instead of just putting a regular uh, tear off roof, you know, a, a shingle, um, asphalt shingle roof, this one does have a replacement uh, metal roof on it. I started a tab also in the thing called cat in photograph. Um, you can't see it here and I can't zoom in, but in that basement looking window and the little transom window underneath, there's a cat who was uh, definitely watching me through the entire time. But it was a repaint job that uh, if it's not prepped properly. I mean, you're painting porcelain. It's a, it's a hard, uh, hard to paint. This is beautiful. This was a, a refurb, not even on a corner. This was, um, if I just turn a little bit to my left, there's a whole nother street. So it's kind of at the end of a really long front yard. This one recently sold. When you do a project like this, everyone you know starts sending you information or when everyone sells. This was in, um, I want to say Cincinnati. And they did an absolutely stunning job um, kind of refurbing it from the ground up. All new plumbing. You can see the, the plumbing fixtures haven't even been um, Evan haven't even been finished. You know, there's still the taps are sticking out, but they refloored it all with wood floors. There's a garage on the backside that was being redone also, but it was a really beautiful job. This woman came out and I spent a, a good amount of time with her. Um, kind of an interesting story too. On the other side of her driveway is a really big ravine um, that runs down by her property. Her property goes back probably two more backyards worth. So instead of having like a big side yard, her backyard was super deep, but that ravine next to her house, you know, every year it comes in like an inch or two. And she had lived there quite a long time. And she was, I think the second owner, she said, but that, that was city property or her property that the city ravine is eating into. So she's actually losing property. And she said that she was in, you know, a, a super long um, battle with the city to, uh, for them to either stabilize the, uh, the ravine or, or do something. So she wasn't losing property on it. Definitely a repaint. There was a, there were no aqua ones and the, uh, they screened in that front porch. 
This was up in Wisconsin. I can't remember where this one was. It was actually raining pretty good on this one. So I'm standing in the, uh, underneath the, uh, the window or the, the roof line of the house next door. I love, my mom hates this one. She's like, you can't see the house. Um, what really makes this picture for me is, are the dog bowls underneath the bush over on the right-hand side. Uh, I just love that. It's, um, you know, as a, as a pet owner and lover, I just think that's, it gives you a little, uh, little bit of insight into their into their world this was outside of indianapolis after uh um brickyard 400 so we had a late sunset so i went around and shot a couple also in indy This was a real surprise. This is um, obviously on a corner, but this was beautiful. I want to say it was in, uh, do, 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 I can't remember the name of it. It's a um, really unique city name, um, but on the corner, just a beautifully maintained Lostron. You can tell they've, they, you know, some people, they, they, they're living in a two bedroom house. Other people are living in a historically significant house. And these people really enjoy this, the historical significance of the house. And you can tell they really, um, appreciated it. This one feels like they took a uh, Wagner power gun, filled it with white paint and painted everything in sight. It's such a unique looking house in that it's so different than everything else in the area. This one also has, if you look at that zigzag um, over on the left side where the gutter comes down, that is an original piece. A lot of the homes don't have those anymore. So there are, you can, with a pipe bender, you can make one, but there's a lot of, um, you know, those are, are something that Lustron owners look at on each other's houses to see if they still have that. You can see this one has those smaller, the original windows on the earlier homes that had the smaller uh, windows instead of the larger ones. Those, were, those last two were North Carolina. This is one of the few Lustrons that is on, that has a basement. And um, really interesting story. So I was, I was taking a couple wide shots and the owner pulled up and he goes, you want to hear a good story? And I'm like, of course. Um, so that one, that picture, not a great picture of the house. I like the other ones better where you can see um, a little more of the surroundings. There's a beautiful uh, bike path and then river in front. Um, but he bought the house and then within a year of him buying a house that lot, that um, hospital behind him said, Hey, we want to, we're going to eventually put a parking lot here or parking garage. We'll buy your house and we'll pay you X amount of dollars. And it was much more than what he had bought for it. And he said, well, yeah, but I don't have anywhere to live. He goes, well, we're not going to build this for a couple more years. So he is now a tenant with the landlord being the hospital and the house that he bought. He ended up making money on it by selling it to him. Also has the original trellis. Um, on the left over where the downspout is. This guy was super cool. I did knock on his door because you could tell, and he wasn't home, um, but you could tell he really loved his house and what he was doing. So these are, and I can't zoom in, but the door he had engraved with the Lustron logo and the Lustron, um, you know, a picture of the house. And then he must have re-poured the the stoop area and embedded the l into the stoop which was really cool i haven't seen anything like that before i thought it was really um i, I can't imagine what the you know what other additions he's done to it to to kind of celebrate uh what he was living in and celebrate the house this was down in uh, maryland also in maryland Big old antenna outside, non lustron garage. This is out in Aurora. There are um, about six lustrons in a row in, ironically, Oak Park, Detroit, uh, Oak Park, Michigan, which is a suburb of Detroit. Um, all the way down left is the salesman that I picked up at the airport. Um, and then we went and I said, you know what, we, we got time. We're going to go by and photograph these houses real quick. So he stayed in the car and stayed warm. I shot the houses. 
This is one of my faves. I just love it. I feel like I want to be in the front window drinking coffee or hot chocolate looking out. What really makes it for me is the grass over on the left, that long kind of a prairie grass. I want to say this is in, uh, this is, this is close by in, in Indiana. This was really cool. I had photographed super cold uh, American flag, uh, non Lester on breezeway kit, but I got back in the car and um, this is in Ohio and I see the, the buggy coming way down the street to my right. And I'm like, God, if he turns left, that's going to be amazing. And sure enough, he does. And I've got a whole series of the, uh, the buggy going by, which was pretty cool. Something I've never seen before. I love the, uh, the, the, the laundry hanging on the out back. It just feels like uh, kind of small town America. Kind of generic laundry too, not a bunch of, you know, t-shirts like this is, you know, if you take out the air conditioner, which is kind of timeless, I guess, but it's, there's really, it could be taken in the fifties, you know. It's an Ivy front yard. This is beautiful. This is another one that was just, you can really tell the owner really like enjoyed everything about the Lustron. It was just, uh, again, this was on kind of a corner, but like a larger corner. It was just a huge piece of land around it. This one was interesting too. The, uh, the woman, I ended up talking to her for a little bit, her husband's, it was like her husband's parents. So I guess her in-laws passed and left them the house. And they started going through just cleaning it out, getting it ready to sell it. And they decided, you know what? They wanted to refurb this and they were gonna sell their other house and move into this one. So they had just recently kind of gone through and they were kind of assessing everything and what they wanted to do to it. But it's kind of funny because you think, all right, you know, we got this house, we'll, you know, just sell it off and, you know, whatever. And she's like, you know what? This is cooler than our house. That, uh, you know, there are a lot of innovations that are really cool. All the doors, there's pocket doors so they don't lose any space. There's the inside has a, uh, a recess in the living room that who knew it would be perfect for a flat screen TV at the time. So they really lend themselves to kind of some modern amenities. This is something else that's really cool too that you just can't do with a regular house. So a lot of times, and like I said earlier, you know, I have to shoot the homes at the, the worst possible time because that's when I could be there. So this house was totally in the shade, but there's a nice reflection on it because there's a white house over my, my right shoulder. And so that white house is actually reflecting into it. So if the house had regular siding or brick or something that wouldn't, that wouldn't show up quite as nicely. This gentleman, if you live in a Lustron, you probably, and you're active in the, the Facebook community, this guy is on the Lustron, um, uh, I guess the, one of the forums or the Facebook groups for Lustron owners. He's, uh, he's also on the Checker uh, uh, Club or Checker group, but the, um, his claim to fame is he's the one that figured out what you need to do if your pocket doors, if you need new hardware for your pocket doors, if it's rusted. So he figured the solution for uh, where you can go into like a, you know, Menards or Home Depot and get the parts you need. So he was like, you know, I got a period checker if you want that in the picture. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So he pulled that out. And then his son and daughter-in-law lived down the street in another, in a different Lustron. They were in a near suburb of um, Springfield, Illinois. This was in, so I mentioned in the beginning, they made a smaller house at the very end of the time when they were just trying to get, they just needed money. They needed, the company was starting to go under, the, the government was trying to, started calling its loan in because there was a lot that went on behind the scenes as well. They were, they were able to secure the loan without putting enough um, percentage down. So a lot of other lawmakers said, you know what, this is, this is you know, we're going to pull it. And so um, Stramlin started, kind of strambling was scrambling. Um, he started trying to make a, uh, you know, something just to get money in the door. And so this is the smaller house. This is 900 square feet. And you can really tell because it's got the, it doesn't have the, the front porch or replacement porch that's been built out. It's the Lustron, you know, tiles all the way up around the, the porch. This one ironically is on a corner with a uh, telephone or with a, um, uh, the phone or the, uh, the, the TV antennas on the back as well. This was in Webster Groves, Missouri as well. 
also whips for growth. So this was almost the trifecta of Lustron, um, Lustron searching or seeking that I've uh, been doing. So this is, if you look carefully, there's actually three Lustrons. So they're on the corner. Um, the big one has a TV antenna. The big one on the corner is also does have a basement. So you can see it's built up and there's, it is on a basement, um, which there's, like I said, there's not many that, that have basements. This is the one that's on a basement. Uh, American flags are flying. Um, this one actually I drove past. This was the first one that, uh, that snuckered me. It wasn't until I saw the garage that I realized that that was in fact a lustron. So the entire, the roof, uh, on the house was uh, it was the original Lustron roof, but the way it was positioned to the street, I'm it's parallel to the street like that, where normally it's the long ways in. And I drove by it twice, like looking at the map going, oh, it must be gone. And then I realized I saw the garage and I'm like, oh, that's it. So on a corner, red car in the driveway. Um, I love seeing the kids stuff outside. Barbecue, I got there too early. They were in there, um, but it was, it, they weren't quite open yet, but it smelled delicious. I love the house that's next to that kind of majestic house and then the Lustron. This one is uh, deep into being, being worked on. It was, the house was gutted. So it looked like they were, uh, they were getting ready to really do a lot of work on it. So that does have the uh, that that detail work on the downspout. This is down New Orleans. Two. Uh, this one's on the corner, and then the next, the one next to it, um, had had uh, they stuccoed over it. So undercover lustrons. These are ones that when you first look at them, they don't look like a lustron. Uh, this is downstate but has a, uh, a non-lustron um, addition on it. Looks like a fireplace is part of the addition as well, which is kind of cool, but just with the full siding, it kind of covers up the door. This is another one with, that had a replacement metal roof installed. And then and they did a partial on the door, which is kind of cool. So you're, you know, if it's raining and you're, you come in, you, you've got a little bit over you. And then the, uh, none of them had a, uh, I, I like the, the addition of the glass block windows. Kind of bring more light into the house. This is in Virginia. And actually, it was kind of interesting. The guy, um, there was a guy down the street who was watching me. And I couldn't tell if he was going to call the police on me or wanted to talk to me. And so I just, I went down and talked to him. I rolled down the window and said, hey, how are you? I'm photographing Lustrons. And he lived next door to this one uh, over on the right-hand side. And there's a museum in Ohio that has a Lustron in, inside the museum. And he's like, oh, you got to go photograph their townhouses around the corner that you could see out of his house, They're like from the kitchen, you could see the backyard of these townhouses. Those were built where the house in Ohio was. So this was in Virginia. Um, they worked in DC, but he's like, you know, you can go in, my wife is home if you wanna go photograph it. And I'm like, yeah, that's just got bad idea written all over it, but it was nice talking to you. Um, but it's kind of cool. Like I said, you know, once you start telling people what you're doing, um, you know, they're like, oh, wait, um, this is a non-lustron, um, very, non-traditional kind of breezeway kit on this house with the siding and the roof. It just, it, if you didn't really look carefully, it wouldn't look like a lustra. These guys were, were working on engine in the back. They came out, we chatted for a while. They were very funny, but beautifully kept front lawn. There was just not a weed anywhere. It was just gorgeous. Both of them, there's a, one guy was retired and his buddy was just there. I'm not working on the engine, I'm just drinking beer. Never seen one with the stone on it. I guess I could almost qualify as a red car in the driveway, but this is uh, in, uh, in uh, just outside of uh, Indianapolis. So this is the reverse of the one down in New Orleans. So um, there were two homes. Uh, the one on the left is on the corner. The one on the right isn't, but kind of different looking. Um, that one did have a new roof on it. So it did look much different. It didn't really scream lustron the, you can see the house is oriented differently too where there's that push out window 
on the left side, on the house on the left is to the street. And then right over on the right hand side of that house, it, the, the, the kind of the bay window on the inside is facing the other way. So the houses weren't built in the same direction. They were, the, the one of them was rotated, which is kind of interesting. So like the doors, the front doors are apart from each other. This one I drove by, I was about to quit and I'm like, yeah, no way. Um, I can't find it. It's gone. And uh, sure enough, I pulled out the iPad and started really looking at it and realized that this was the Lustron. There's also another Lustron behind it. You can see that yellow one more traditional looking one. This is just out in Aurora. I think this was in Ohio, I can't remember. A couple of them have this front uh, roof line on it, which I thought was pretty cool, but he did move his door over. So his door was normally over on the left-hand side and the windows are all different on the front. That bay window that's normally on the Lustron has been removed. That's the bay window. This was beautiful. So there was a guy at the, um, this was on the corner and the guy who lived diagonal corner came over and uh, he mows the lawn and stuff. He said the woman moved out a little while ago. Um, she was older and retired, went to a, a home, but this was the back of the house. And they built that, that tool shed um, on the far left to try to mimic the Lustron, but they, they, those are Lustron tiles on the addition on the back. So they did go find, um, it looked like almost like a double breezeway kit, but I'm sure they just found tiles to, uh, to, to build them. Cause you can tell they repainted the, whatever Lustron tiles they were able to find, but it was, it was really nicely done. So just back to some of the regular ones. I love this one. It was just totally hidden. And then the, uh, the, the antenna again with the captain corners. This is another one. If you look this one is up on um, this one, there's a basement under it. And then when you turn the other way, there's a house. So this one's on the corner and there's another one over on the left that was on the corner. Not doesn't have a basement, um, but it was kind of cool to see these two next to each other. This was in uh, Rockford. It's like the all-American home. I really like this photograph. Also in Rockford. Obviously painted. <laughs> this one was done during like the, during the lockdown. Um, and actually on the porch, you can't really read it. Um, if I could zoom in, I could read it. But that's a Flovey box. So remember in the beginning of the lockdown, everyone was worried how they're like, oh, how am I going to cut my hair? Um, I didn't think Flovies were still made. That was like the suck cut where you'd hook up the, the, the trimmer to a vacuum cleaner. And then you would just kind of suck your hair into the vacuum and it would, would trim it and cut it. So, um, kind of funny. This was an interesting house. So this was a demo house that was built in Chicago, um, as a, as a sample house, but had to be moved because of the, um, I can't remember what, what codes, didn't, were, were in conflict with the house, but it was something about either um, copper pipes and this had lead pipes or something, but this house is, this is out in McHenry County, but it was initially built downtown. They talk about it in the book, um, but it was, it was one of the first homes and you can tell it also had the, the double, uh, the two sets of two windows on the side of the house. So it was definitely one of the earlier homes but out in McCarran County. And then real close to that is this one, which was the last house that was sold. Um, the last Lustron that was sold before they went bankrupt. And it's also on a basement. And ironically, it's it's like 10 minutes from the from one of the first houses um, that from this one. So they're, they're super close to each other. Um, but this was the last Lustron ever sold um, before the company went totally belly up. And then uh, it was also uh, one of the few on a basement. And these are some non-traditional Lustrons. So this was, um, these are ones that just, they don't look like Lustrons anymore, or they've done so much work to them. They've done some cool mods. This was also in Minneapolis. So this one is down the street from that first one where I said you had to wake up real early and there's a park across the street and it was kind of cool because the shadow was on the lawn. So down at the corner is this one that is just stunning. Um, they definitely repainted, um, but that's the, the, you know, kind of traditional looking Lustron in the front, but then behind it, um, is like a, a corrugated steel 
outer of a, like a real nice traditional um, dining room in there. And then behind the dining room is the garage, uh, like a, a story and a half garage also made out of um, corrugated steel, but a really cool looking house. Definitely does not look like a Lustron. This one I drove by a couple of times. I'm still not convinced it is. I mean, it is, you can tell with the, the push out windows, but the, the original Lustron's on the left. Um, the fireplace is obviously not traditional and then the building on the right of it. Um, but again, this was, I drove by and I'm like, there's no Lustron here. This one, unfortunately, is uh, right across the street from a college. But while I was there photographing it, there were guys measuring it to cover it in siding. Um, two construction guys, super young. They were like, why would you cover this? And I'm like, I totally agree. But um, so I'm sure this was has been sided by now. Um, and definitely does not look uh, does not look as lustrani. So on the left, that goes way back. So that probably goes back two or three more house distances um, inside. So it was a much bigger house than, uh, than kind of a normal Lustron. There are a couple that have been like this where they put uh, like a, a larger house kind of on the back end of it and then use a Lustron as a living area in the front. This is a very non-traditional but very cool. Um, so instead of having a breezeway, it almost looks like a, a different house. So the initial front porch you can see has the, uh, the windows there and a door. So I don't know if the, if what door they use to go in because there's an, an, an actual outside door to the left of it. So it's kind of a cool looking, um, you know, the, the built-in garage, but it looks like an actual livable space in between the garage and the Lustron house. It almost takes up probably as much as a, uh, you know, like half as much as the, uh, as, as a house, but really nicely done. This was super cool. So this was in, um, I can't remember if it was Virginia or Maryland, but it was when I was um, in DC for a trip. So this is almost like two and a half Lustron. So you can see the front is a, um, they, they took the time to find uh, original tiles, almost so much as an original house. They pulled out all the original windows and replaced the windows, but it's a, um, and there's even Lustron tiles on the roof of the of the addition. This house did just hit the market. Someone sent me um, a, a, a link for it, but there it is again, just absolutely stunning. It's beautifully done. And I just, I love that drive around basement. Um, and then you can see the windows in it. So it's not a, a dark, you know, a, a garage that's all, you know, dark and nasty. It looks like a decent living space down there as well. So I just thought it was such a beautifully done home. This was, um, this was in the house, uh, one of the homes in Minneapolis on, uh, on that street. So that front area, uh, again, they took the time, not only did they get luster on tiles, the, um, they, they matched the, uh, on the roof line that's not actual the, the metal that Lustron used, but they did a really good job matching it. But all the case windows are the same as what was used in the house. So, um, I can't imagine they're not double windowed being up in Minneapolis, but it's a really beautifully done addition that would add, you know, living space to the house, a good amount of living space. This is the one I was telling you about that is so crazy. So I showed you earlier a shot taken from the sidewalk of the house next to it, that kind of peach colored one. So I didn't even realize when I first saw it, um, that these two houses were the same house. The blue one in the foreground and that two-story house next to it are the same house. So that house, and it's covered in, in the old school, very um, New Orleans feel, uh, wrought iron fencing, um, the cool, just the colors, it just had such a cool feel to it. Uh, they picked me up at the airport and there were these two homes and then the other two that were next to each other were a couple blocks away. So I had paper ready for the driver that, uh, that, that Canon sent for, it was a rollout for the, the RP camera. Um, but I'm like, can we stop? And they were literally right in between where we're headed and the airport. So I'm like, can we pull over really quick? And uh, so we did and it was totally worthwhile. It's such a cool, such a cool job on that one. This again, looks like two houses put together. This is downstate Illinois. Red car in the driveway, red truck in the driveway. But again, not a not the 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 non air conditioned looking uh, breezeway. It looks like actual living space on that one. 
a different house now downstate. This looks more like a uh, like a barn, like a working barn. And these are some of the most recent ones. This one I would have, um, I probably should put in the non-traditional one. This is up in um, Evanston. Completely not, doesn't look like a lustrant at all. I still question if it's a lustrant. This was in up in uh, Wisconsin. I was up for a, um, a school up there. We did a, a demo and worked with the students for a couple days. Lustron Garage. Also up in Wisconsin. So these last couple ones are really cool. So Tom Fetters, um, I started, I got a, started a good relationship with him. Just asking him questions. He's a historian, wrote the book, um, the Lustron book. And we did a live stream for uh, the birder community. So these are people that photograph birds. And I had no idea before I worked at Canon how big of a community it is and how um, how how just how big it is. And so we were in Albuquerque. We we're south of Albuquerque. And I reached out to him and I said, you know, I'm going to be about an hour, hour and a half south of Albuquerque for a job, but I'm done by 11, but we're going to have to wake up at two in the morning for the, the live stream. Is it worth trying to get to Los Alamos to photograph the homes in Los Alamos. And his phrase um, that I remember said, it's not to be missed. And um, so I'm like, well, how am I gonna question that? You know, I'm gonna, how am I gonna, <laughs> um, you know? So I had a Red Bull, a Coke and a candy bar and these are the homes in Los Alamos. The other thing that's really interesting about the Los Alamos homes, if you look, there's that bay window that's pushed out a little bit and then the large window over on the side, but it has that, middle bank window. So these are all three bedroom homes. And there are very few of the three bedrooms that were made, but all the ones in Los Alamos that are near the reactor are, um, or the, it's not a reactor, it's a, uh, I think they call it a national laboratory, um, but there are three bedroom homes. Very eclectic one, sidecar, the BMW motorcycle with the sidecar and the smart car. And then a vet underneath the cover. This one just happened to hit at the right time of day with the light coming through the, uh, the detail. And this one, I, I got in the car and like, I'm gonna drive away. Then I'm like, no, I gotta go back. There's more cool stuff there. So the front yard was really cool, but then I got in the car and I realized you could see the mountain behind it. And I'm like, that's the only Lustron. These are all mostly built in the Midwest. The story is too, that there weren't, there are very few lustrons built on the other side of the Rockies because it costs too much to deliver the house. So by the time they got the house there, um, you know, drove it over the Rockies, it, it was too expensive. They were losing money on the delivery um, for the house. So there's very few of them that were made other side of the Rockies. And we're ending up with just a couple of my favorite ones. This is a, uh, that's a lustron, um, that is a lustron breezeway kit. This was just down right across the border in, uh, in Indiana. This is one of the first ones I shot. It's um, just outside of uh, Detroit. But I just, I, the way it's pushed back from the road, larger houses on either side. There's just something about this, this photograph that I like. This is like, it's just crazy. So the house is abandoned, um, but I just love the car dealership next door to it. This was in, uh, this was in Webster Groves, Missouri. This was recently. I had my dad in the car and we were shot a couple of them while I was down there. This is the Whitehall Historical Society. So this is kind of the ad hoc um, Lustron Historical Society. It's in Whitehall, Ohio, which is a suburb of, the, of uh, Columbus. So as I'm standing looking at this, really over my left shoulder at about like the six, about the seven o'clock, eight o'clock position, um, is the airport. So it's not far away. The house was moved there. There's a second house next to it. And this is in a park area. Um, but it's really, we're, we're kind of towards the end of the, the bottom of the runway where the, the CSW warehouse is, where, um, where Lustrons were built. So this is, like I said, one, this is Whitehall Historical Society in Whitehall, Ohio. Um, this is also in, this is near Whitehall, but not um, in Whitehall. This was awesome. So I was in, this is outside of, I was in Cleveland, I was driving back. And uh, sometimes you just, you're on the road, you're following the map, you're not really paying attention. You're like, 
it's funny how like you get so used to using the stupid map on your phone. You like people are like, oh, how'd you get in? Did you take 94 to, you know, 290? And I'm like, I, I, I have no idea how I got here. I, I, you know, just followed my phone and I'm driving and driving and there's like, you know, buildings are going away. Houses are going away. And I'm like, this cannot be right. And sure enough, literally like I'm driving country roads, nothing, nothing, farm pops up nothing, nothing. And then this lustron out in the middle of nowhere. It's just, it's really one of my favorites. I can't, I can never decide which one I like. I think I like this one um, because it just tells a bigger story. You know, it's the farmhouse, the pool out back, and then just fields all around it. That's the uh, Los Alamos. That's probably the cover of the book in Los Alamos if I ever make a book. And that's it. So there you go. Stop sharing my screen. I saw we had a couple questions pop up. I figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll read some of these out. Uh, let's see here. So we've got from Ryan. Ryan first says R.I.P. Brooks, and uh, talking about your one of your alma maters hey. there. That's awesome. Um, what year did you graduate, Ryan? <laughs> I find out. Um, Ryan wants to know, has anyone done an addition to a Lustron home in the Lustron style? Can you even buy similar porcelain panels nowadays? So you can sort of. So that one in, um, in Ohio in, uh, that was outside of Washington, D.C. is the best one I've seen yet. And ironically, like a lot of times Lustrons will, they'll go for sale for just a, you know, come get it. You can have this house. We're going to knock it down. We'll let it, you know, it, anyone can have it, but no one ever does. Um, when I was talking to people at the, um, at Lustron Historical, at a Whitehall Historical Society, he said that they were able to get one house taken down and, 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 you know, stored away, but it's just too hard because it's trying to get volunteers together and it's the amount of work needed to do it. So, um, Whitehall Historical Society does have two shipping containers full of parts. So I did get a, um, in the kitchen, so all the panels are two by two. And in the kitchen, each house has one panel that's got a, a flip out door that's probably about a 12 by 12 door where the electrical, where the fuse box was. And I asked um, if I can get one and he literally sold me one, I think it was 20 bucks and it cost me like 30 bucks to ship it. But I was gonna do that with another Lustron panel on the back as a portfolio case for this project. And I haven't done it yet. But Whitehall does have, um, like they've got pallets of, of, of tiles and stuff, but it's a, it's a matter of, you know, it's, it's two guys that are retired that are, that are, you know, you can come get it. I think he's more, uh, he's more uh, amenable to people that will come get it, pay him on the spot. Cause he said he'd, he shipped some to people and he never got paid for it. And it's just, it would be, if you imagine like trying to ship a two by two flat, you know, it's just, it needs a weird box to put it in and stuff. But there are a couple, um, like I said, the, uh, the one in, um, in, it was outside of DC was the best. And then that one in uh, Nicolette, that's the name of the street. I told you I get it in Minneapolis, St. Paul. So Nicolette street is the one that has like six or eight of them or more than that. It's probably eight to nine in a row. And one of them had like, it looked like a sunroom, but it was a, a full living area. All right. Uh, Susan wants to know, where is the home the man is now renting from the hospital? Um, Ohio. I can, uh, if you, uh, if someone covers me for a second, I can look it up. So I've got everything in a, um, in an Airtable database, but it was in Ohio. Um, I don't know. I, when I talk to people, if they give me their business card, I'll photograph my hand holding the card in front of the house, thinking if I were to get, you know, hit by, struck by lightning and I forget everything, that someone can go through the files and at least know that like, oh, here's the guy with this house. So whenever, you know, anyone comes out and I talk, and like I said, I, I, I try to be, I don't want to say creepy, but I, you know, I kind of get in and get out. Um, majority of the homes are, are shot with, uh, one camera in the same lens, a, a particular wide angle lens. But um, but when I do talk to them, I do record that. So I've got that in my notes. So let me see real quick. Let me look up the Ohio houses. Is there another question while I pull this up? Yeah, absolutely. Where did the term lustron come from? 
I have no idea. I normally have the book, sadly, like I carry it around with me, like everywhere I go. And on this trip, we had to bring so much gear with us that I was, and we haven't traveled in so long that uh, I'm, I'm really out of practice. But the, um, I want to say it is, he does cover it in that, fetter, it is covered in the Fetters book. I'll have to look it up. The, um, God, this is a good question. She just won Stomp the Chomp. <laughs> um, another question, this is from Peter or Sharon. Um, would the houses, with the Lustron houses been hot in the summer? Yes. The cool thing too, the one, um, the early one that I was in that I said, you know, when, when I said I told my wife, I, I try not to go in them, but the one guy was like an architect or something and he had all the paperwork and stuff. And, and he said that they're so solid. This is something really cool about Lustron that I learned reading the book. So when you get like a, a, a glass jar of like jelly or, or something, the lid, that rubber that's inside the lid is literally what was used in between the panels of Lustron, of the Lustron panels. So they tried all these different items, uh, like everything from caulk to like a, um, uh, more like a tar based item um, or, or material that would allow a little bit of, of swelling and shrinkage depending on, you know, what time of year, what time of season it is, but they were, um, and they, nothing was as durable as the stuff that they found. And it was literally, this was pre the Lustron was doing it. And then the, the, the material turned into like lids of houses and stuff. Um, lids of the, uh, wait, nope, nope, that's not it. Of the different containers. All right, hold on, let me do one thing. Let me try to speed this up. We're going to sort by. State apply. Uh, we got another question here if you got yeah. space for it. Um, has anyone ever invited you in to shoot the interior of their home? Yes, a couple of people. Um, actually, Fetters is going to republish the book, do a second version, and he asked if I would go shoot some interiors. Um, and like I said in the beginning, I tried to stay away from it because in the very beginning, before I really got as into it as I am now, um, I was trying to get, I was so set on numbers. So I would be on a road trip and I've got, I would print out a map and then have the addresses of what I was gonna hit on the way. So if I had like a, and it usually took about twice the amount of time. So if I was gonna you know, be traveling somewhere and it's a three hour road trip, it would take me like six or seven hours to get there with all the stops. So I realized, and that's when I said, you know what? I had to make some, some parameters for me. Got it, here we are. It is in Troy, Ohio. It's 119 Jackson Street, Troy, Ohio. Right. is the uh, where the hospital is. And so I don't know what hospital is around the corner, but I do have the serial number of that house as well. And the guy owns, um, actually, I'll show you. So here's the, uh, here's how I do it. So a picture of his business card with the house behind it. So if I lose the business card, I still have the data and I put that in my database as well. So even if I were to, you know, if the house floods and I lost everything, I would still have that, the information with it. So, and I did reach out to him probably six months ago by now to see if he was still in the house. And, uh, and he said he was, so he hasn't, they haven't leveled it yet. So, which yeah. is good, but the, um, but Tom Fetters does, he just reached out recently, like in, literally in the past week or so um, and said that they're going to do a second edition and asked about using some pictures and asked if I could shoot some interiors. And I've got interior shots when I've walked through homes with people um, the one guy in Minneapolis was an architect with all the, uh, with all the stuff. And I just did some quick shots, but I am going to go back um, for this book and I'll go in and do some real traditional architectural kind of lit views and stuff to, to kind of talk about. It. It's really interesting. Like I said, all the homes had a recess bookcase in the living room that now, like who knew 50 years ago, like we'd all have flat screen TVs that fit in this thing 
perfectly. So before, like the house, you'd have to have a TV kind of in the corner on the stand. Now it is like it could not be more perfect for for a modern TV set, which is really interesting. Um, Ryan wants to know: Is the Lustron footprint a perfect square since the roof could be positioned differently? It is not. And there's, um, like I said, there's I think seven different models. That being said, there's like two or three models that um, even Tom Fetters hasn't seen an actual, has never seen one in real life. So I think there were some theoretical models that were never made. And then majority of them, I think are three different models, like the Meadowbrook. Um, it's a little bit, um, it's, it's a little bit of a rectangle. It's not quite a square. I feel like the ones that they made, the 900 square foot homes at the end of the run when they were just trying to, to get more money and, and have something smaller and quicker, those are definitely a square because they just, they look at, there were a couple in Ohio that I photographed and then that blue one in St. or in, in Webster Groves um, definitely are, are square. But I think the traditional ones are a little bit, like if you go um, like in that side view on... See if I can quickly share and then unshare. Uh, like this one, um, where there's the front view and then there's the side view. So it's a little more of a rectangle. All right. Um, how are the tiles attached to the structure? Um, that's something that they actually, they tested, and this was also out of the book. Um, it was a company down in, I think it was Cleveland. It was definitely not in Ohio uh, or not in uh, Columbus where they were doing it. So they had initially talked to one company and they had devised a system that was almost like a, um, almost like a fence or a grate that the tiles would hook onto. And that was, it was too costly and too hard. It was too slow to put together. Their goal was that they, their goal was for three weeks to be able to non, non-union, which got them in trouble a little bit. Um, but non, I think they were calling it non-skilled labor to be able to install a house or build a house from ground zero up inside of three weeks. That being said, of the, the 16 that were in Brookfield, initially four, they bought four, or the builder built, was uh, granted permits to build four of them. He went back to get to the city, to the village of Brookfield to buy, to get more. And uh, he, the village of Brookfield said, you need to finish the four that you, you started. And they were taking much longer. So they like said, their goal was three weeks. I know the quickest they've ever done it, the book mentions just three months, is three, three days. And then most of them were taking like a month and a half to build, um, which was a little bit slower. But the the one, the system that they ended up going with, it's like a tongue and groove. So the, the tiles have like an L shape. So it, it goes on straight and then drops down and then two screws hold it on. And then the next one is like upside down and it keeps going down. And then that, that, that cock gook or whatever that's inside of um, like jelly, any glass jelly jars and stuff is uh, is then covered over it. And and just like the the tiles that as long as they don't crack, I've seen homes that still look like they had that original gook in there that whatever they were using, that that rubber, that kind of plasticky rubber material. I don't know. Um, Ryan wants to know, are the Lustrons and Lombard generally in good shape? Yes. Um, Lombard, Lombard's the largest, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? The largest concentration of lustrons, I think in the world, if I'm not mistaken, without a doubt in Illinois, um, initially there were, I can't remember the numbers. I want to say they were over 45, um, when they were first built and now they're down to like 25 or so. Um, but all the ones that I photographed, I think I photographed almost all of them. They're all in pretty good shape. The, the two that I showed you, um, they're next to each other. One of them, it, it's funny, one of them looks like it needs a wax job, but you could actually go out and buff it out and wax it like a car. Um, and that's, that was like in their ads is a woman sitting there with a garden hose spraying the side of the house down, but you really could go out with like an orbital buffer and buff out the, your house and then wax it if you wanted to, which is just absurd. Yeah. <laughs> It also sounds like a car owner's dream. You just go from yeah. one to the other. Uh, right. Wow. Well, Dirk, uh, thank you so much.
for sharing your work with us and your passion. Yeah. Really appreciate it. And thanks for staying around and listening to us. It's uh, like I said, it, it never started out. I didn't start out with the goal to, you know, I have photographed more Lustron homes than any human being on the face of the planet. <laughs> but it's kind of it's kind of been fun. You know, there's been so many um, so many different levels where you can approach it. You know, just like I was saying during the thing, like on a social level, on a on a like construction level, how you know how they last. They truly, and that was part of his early um, was to build a home that would stand the test of time. I think was his phrase, and it's you know here here we are you know 60 years later and they have been as long as nothing's cracked on the house um some of the internal stuff wasn't stainless steel could will rust um and that's what the one guy on the the one luster on group figured out like on the uh, the pocket doors if the uh, the wheels have worn down or rusted off like how to redo them but it's it's, it's a cool project i i would like to have been able to meet him um, but he died i want to say recently like in the 2000s um, he died and, and he was an inventor. He held tons of patents on uh, farm equipment. He worked at, um, out in, where's John Deere located? Um, I should know this in my client. I've been there a bunch of times out in, um, oh God, they're about 90 minutes, about an hour, hour and a half straight west of the city. Um, but they, he worked there and he holds, uh, both him and his dad, um, hold a ton of patents on farm equipment. On, on tooling and stuff. So it's kind of a cool, so he's a, he uh, called himself an inventor and uh, industrialist, I think, which is kind of cool. I appreciate you guys listening. Yeah, Stand absolutely. Around. Yeah, and uh, you can look at more of Dirk, Dirk's work at dirkfletcher.com. Um, I put the website in the chat. Um, thank you to you at home for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you to Dirk. Um, Dirk, anything else you'd like to say? Nope. <laughs> if you have questions, um, DirkFletcher.com or on Instagram, just at Dirk Fletcher. If you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to reach out. I'll keep posting and I post stuff from travels mostly. I don't do a lot of personal stuff on social media, but um, whenever I'm on the road, I post stuff from there and from Lostrons that I, that I photograph. So thank you very much for, for listening. All right. Thank you. And good night, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks, we'll see you, you next time.